Good morning, good morning, good morning. How are you? Okay, y'all. I'm up this morning. And since I didn't have to work till this evening, I was like, I'm asleep. But can I tell you, God will wake you up and you be like, it's time to get up. I always think of the scripture when my mother, when I was little, my mother always used to refer to the, the slugger that lays around all day. So I hear that in my head if I decide to just take an extra 15 minutes. So excuse me for a minute while I listen to, it's called Breakthrough by Red Rock. And I'm telling you, these people know how to worship God early in the morning. This is my morning coffee. So I'm going to listen to this for a few minutes and drink my coffee. How you doing? But today, I'm going to talk to y'all about the heart and the mind. Because a lot of times, um, I didn't mean to start, but I'm in now. A lot of times we get, I don't own the rights to this music. This is not my music. It's not my husband's music. But it's my worship music. How about that? And I love it. And I encourage you to go and check them out. Breakthrough. It's awesome. You want to worship? A good worship song? Not a lot of hoopla? Yeah, tune in to Breakthrough, Red Rock, okay? It's called Red Rock Worship. Check them out. Um, so, I was real skeptical about doing a live. I like to now record it and then go back and edit it. But this morning, God was like, nope, I need you to just go. So I said, all right, God, what you want me to talk about? Hey, cousin. And so I said, all right, the mind. Do you know the mind will have you trapped in fear to the point where you won't move forward? I mean, have you thinking thoughts that you be like, where did that come from? They don't even feel that way. We worry too much about what people think or what people got to say that we don't move forward. Meanwhile, they're moving. They're moving their feet and they're doing things that you wish you were doing. I challenge you, as I challenge myself, to move your feet. Pitch a tent. That's what God has been saying to me. Pitch a tent. Take a risk. Go out on a limb like the man did to reach Jesus. He heard Jesus was passing through. I don't have a lot of scriptures for y'all today. I'm just talking. But he heard Jesus was in town. He decided to go out on the limb. Now you know, think about a tree. Take a few minutes to think about a tree and the branches of a tree. And if you crawl out on a limb, limbs are very thin and skinny. It doesn't matter how big you are or how small you are. But if you were to walk out on a limb, it's going to sink down as if you are on a diving board. Right? Here's the catch. What's underneath you? Will there be a safety net? Or will you hit rock bottom and crash and kill yourself? Well, here's the thing with faith. You never know unless you do it. You have to walk out on that limb in order to know if you are going to be able to accomplish that thing. How you doing, Sister Joyce? I ain't seen you in a long while. Um, so you have to just walk out on that limb. So I encourage you. Step out on the limb. Step out on the limb. Take a risk. Stop allowing people to hold you back. Mentally. Spiritually. Okay? Happy birthday, Lene. Um, listen. We, fear is serious. We don't really think about it. Because we try to be like, oh, it's not that serious. But it's really, it's really serious. I was listening to a, um... A video the other day. I wanted to share it, but I cannot. I've been told not to share it. So I'm not going to share it. However, I can tell you what the man talked about. He talked about, he said, you don't have no prayer problem. He said, no, that's not your problem. Your problem is your mind. Your mindset. How are you 
thinking? What are you doing with these thoughts? He said, <laughs> he said, have you any idea that the people are out there waiting, not the people, yeah, the people are out there waiting for you. Meanwhile, you're sitting back waiting for money or waiting for this or waiting for that person when God has already made provisions for you, for us. How about that? He's already made provisions when all we have to do is step out there. And when we begin to walk in that thing, God will take the second step for us. He will walk with us, hold our hand, and say, it's okay, I got you. Come on, we can do this. So like I said, I don't have a whole bunch of papers. I did want to write something down. The Lord wouldn't let me do it. I was like, all right. He just said, go. There are people who are listening or waiting to hear from you. Not necessarily me, Dora, but anybody out there who feels like God has called you to this great thing. Pitch a tent. Period. Start moving your feet. Stand up. When people tell you to sit down, if you know that you know, and you've been praying and you've been waiting, I ask you to move. I tell you to move. Pray. And ask God to show you how. Ask God to, you know, give you strength to pick your feet up, to open your mouth. Some people have mouthpieces, and they have yet to open their mouth to say what God told them to say because they're scared of what somebody's going to think. Stop worrying about people. Stop worrying about things that not really your business. It's not your business. Other people's heart. That ain't your business. Say what God said. Just be, let's just be obedient together. Like, I say together because guess what? We in it together. I got to do it with you. So, the mind part. You know, we have imaginations. I mean, imaginations where we think of things. And the man said, I wrote it down, y'all. He said the antidote to depression mm, is a revelation. Can you imagine? And so after I heard it, I went back and rewinded it. Had to hear it again, and then I had to write it down. Can you imagine when you're going through something and you get a revelation about it? When you get a revelation about a guy that hasn't been treating you right, but now you got a revelation about him, what do you do? Immediately, you stop dealing with him, or you put a halt on it. If you get a revelation about a job, you're working at a job, and people aren't doing you right, or maybe they are doing you right, or whatever the case is, but you get a revelation, think about that. You're going through something. The antidote to depression is a revelation. Think about it. Revelation to depression. When you get a revelation about something, it brings you to a standstill. It, may, it, challenge you, it challenges you to do something different than what you've been doing. So if the, what you've been doing haven't been working... Do something different. The antidote to depression is a revelation. Listen, God bless you. I love you. I pray your strength in the Lord. I didn't have a long, drawn out, nothing for you today. Scriptures or anything like that. I was just supposed to just talk. Because I woke up, my brother was like, yeah, come pick me up from 5th District. I said, boy, yeah, D-Wash, I'm calling you out. I said, stop playing with me early in the morning. Like, I wasn't even ready to get up yet. He was like, maybe the Lord wanted you to get up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sure. So here I am talking to you. This is what came to me this morning, so I had to share it. God bless you. Heaven smile upon you. I pray you strengthen the Lord today. I encourage you to get up and pitch a tent. That's it. God bless.